Yo, what's going on guys? This is it, the final stretch. Um, hopefully, I don't want to make too many videos, but um, I just want to make like maybe like a three-part series talking about extravascular delivery and how to feather the whole, you know, feathering, whatever. Um, three videos, not too long. So let's get into it. Extravascular delivery, what is that? That's just oral. We know it's oral and we know it's immediate release. So it's like a tablet, stuff like that. And we got it right here, D. D in a circle, that's that's like a tablet, right? So let's say that whatever, this is a tablet. And this tablet, you know, you take it, after some time it's sitting in your GI tract and it starts getting absorbed. It gets absorbed at a, um, at a certain rate, right? And it gets absorbed at a certain rate into the central compartment. And we see here that there's no peripheral, so we know it's a one compartment model. Um, and while the drug is in the central compartment, it gets eliminated at a certain rate okay so we know that here this whole thing is going to be first order okay so first order means rate the rate is equal to k times x right so where k is a um is a rate constant not the actual rate rate is kx k is just um the rate constant and x is the amount of drug okay so what do we have here we have two k's right it's not really just one k it's two k so how do we apply that so k let's let me just define ka ka is the uh rate constant of absorption and i'm just going to abbreviate that as abs okay so ke is the rate constant of elimination right because i mean because that's what's happening you got ka is going in ke is leaving but then how do we apply that? Doesn't Isn't just rate K, uh, Kx, how do we apply when we have two? Well, we just apply, um, well, we just use, we use it twice pretty much. So let's say the overall rate is this, okay? So we're looking at the central compartment. So how much drug is entering the central compartment? Well, we know that D, it would be D, right? D is the amount of drug entering. So we have D here. D would be X and K, we know Ka is here, so it's pretty much as KAD and how much drug is leaving well X is leaving the central compartment so we got X here and KE is the rate constant of elimination so that's right here and would it be positive or negative it would be negative because elimination is always negative so this is the uh, thing we want this is the, equal, the the rate equation we want to work with all right, so I just rewrote the rate equation. Rate is equal to Ka times D minus Ke times X. And this is the graph to really just demonstrate that. So we know rate, that's not the actual equation, right? What we always do is we integrate, right? We into, we need to integrate this somehow to get the actual equation of the line. So let me just um, bring your attention to this real quick. So I wrote it, I know it's a lot, it's a lot of um, writing, but I'm gonna explain it. So. Here we go, we have the rate. Rate is equal to you know dx over dt, and that's ka times d minus ke times x. So we integrate that. And Shao doesn't really tell us how um, to really integrate that, integrate it, but we end up getting a big equation. This equation is huge, but here we go. It's x is equal to you know all this d times k over ka minus ke, and then times this whole e thing. And what we do next is we want to work with concentration, right? We don't we don't want to work with x, we, so we just divide it by volume, divide it by volume on both sides, and you know we get a whatever one over v here. So we divide by volume on both sides, and we know based on the volume distribution equation, which is uh, v is equal to x over c, or um, c is equal to x over v. So x over v is just c and the one over v ends up being here so this is the equation we have but it's still pretty big right so what do we do next we can say we can call a as this d times k a over v times k a minus k e so if this whole thing is a we can just substitute it in right so now we have c is equal to a times e to the negative kt minus e to the negative k a t. So this really simplifies what we have and you know just for simplicity's sake, just for convenience I mean we'll distribute the a and this is what we get a times uh, e to the negative k 
KET minus A times E to the negative KAT. Okay. So this is what we have, and I'm just going to bring it over. Okay. I'm just going to bring it over. So this is what we have the equation we want to work with. So how do we apply these equations to the actual graph? And it's pretty simple. So we have um, Ka times D, which is the rate of absorption, and Ke times X, which is the rate of elimination. So let's say I draw um, a line through the middle, right? We see that there's a positive slope here, so it's going up, so it's a positive slope. Here the line's going down, so that's a negative slope, right? And where is the positive in this equation? Well, it's KAD, that's positive. And the negative here is KEX, right? Because there's a negative sign in front. So we can say KAD predominates and KEX, negative KEX predominates. Another way to phrase this is right here, we got KAD is greater than KEX. So the rate of absorption is greater than the rate of elimination. And right here, we got KEX is greater than KAD. So elimination is greater than absorption, which makes sense because you go up and you hit a point and you go down. So this point right here is actually special too because that's where KAD is equal to KEX. That's when absorption is equal to elimination. The rate of, sorry, the rate of absorption is equal to the rate of elimination because um, we know rate is also slope, right? So what's the slope here? It's just a flat line, it's zero. The slope here is zero. In order for the slope to be zero, KAD has to equal the same as KEX for them to cancel out in this equation. So these are just some, some points. But how do we apply um, the actual, This is, and this is really the most important thing in order to understand for feathering. So to feather, a data plot. I'm just gonna. I'm just really just gonna introduce it. We have to use the terminal phase data. Terminal phase data mean, usually means the last three points. So this is terminal phase. And why do we use the last three points? Because um, the reason why we use the last three points is because we also know that Ka is generally a lot bigger than Ke. So the the rate constant of absorption is generally a lot greater than the rate constant of elimination. And what happens when um, a lot of time has elapsed, right? So this much time has elapsed. You can say a lot of time has elapsed. <clears throat> so if Ka is greater than Ke and it's at a really big time, we're just gonna have elimination, right? Because there's no absorption left. All, everything here is just the body eliminating the drug. And how do we apply that to this equation? So let's say, um, Let's make T uh, two hours, and let's make Ka. Ka is five, and Ke is uh, one, right? So we're following the rule that K is bigger than Ke. So now we get C is equal to A times E to the negative. Um, negative Ke is one times time is two, so we get negative two minus one minus uh, a times e to the negative five times five k times t2 so that's 10. what do we get well we get this turns out to be turns out to be a really small number almost zero right so at terminal phase when t is really big when we're using the last three points we can safely say that c is equal to a times e to the negative kt only Right, because this part, this whole thing cancels out. So that's really the introduction. And the next few videos, next few videos, I'll get into actual 